going to completely railroad it out of the audience. She wants to call railroad funds here. But, 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 you did, but, you did, but you didn't have time to train us. No. So, you know, just like uh, the original reenactment here, no one knows their lines. So this will seem natural for everyone. All right, I'm going to kick it off with the narrator right here. The day was May 10, 1869. The location was Palmer Trace of Utah Territory, an outlaw high point place for the Palmer Nation of an, of an undertaking that will mark the end of the old rush and the beginning of the new. The gathering is both the stamina and an anxious and an anxious. We're awaiting for that moment of miracle when a common man was played, driven into the regular journal, originally tied to link a continent, a gentle breeze blowing under almost all the skies, the thermometer on the shady side of the Central Pacific Telegraph, telegraph point, registered 69 degrees above the, the babble of voices can be heard. The hissing and the steam locomotives, then a eagle mill, a wealthy baker, the Sacramento shops, for a signal for science. So the Navy issue, as well as the spectators, gathered here away as the drama had been built. Prayers and dreams begin to unfold. The drama of men's hope, prayers and dreams begin on this May 10th, the day of May, 1869, and you are here. Alright, go ahead and read your line. Cemetery, Utah Territory. To the country, Utah keep quiet. When the last spike is driven, we will say D O N E. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the officials of both railroads and the New York, we are assembled to enter the earth to defeat a new and firm mouth in Europe and the world at the time the raw richness of the American West is finished for the second best for peace. We are also met today with this emotion, the joy that we have combined at the
And now it is my pleasure to introduce a fellow resident of Sacramento, Dr. Harvey W. Harkness, who will present ceremonial fights to Governor Gideon Stanford of the Southern Pacific and Dr. Thomas Brown of the Union Pacific. We will place these fights in holes that have already been drilled in the long world of past time. Ladies and gentlemen, let me point out that these two spikes are new work in this time. These are golden spikes made from two of California gold. Yay! Dr. Hartman. Mr. President, the last rail needed is the complete of the importance of this enterprise to the material interests of the sections which you represent on this occasion. 
the material interests of our whole country, east and west, north and south. These gifts shall receive a fitting place in the superstructure of our road. The day may not be far distant when these tracks will be found, when three tracks, sorry, three tracks will be found necessary to accommodate the commerce and travel, which will seek a transit across the continent. And in conclusion, I will add that we hope to do ultimately what is impossible on long lines, transport heavy, coarse, and cheap products for all distances at living rates to the trade. I thank you. In his absence, Governor the Grandview Dodge, Chief Engineer of the Union Pacific, will represent his building for the human rights. General Dodge. Ah, Civil War hero. Woo! <laughs> Gentlemen, the great senator from Missouri, Thomas Hart Benson, proposed that someday a giant statue of Columbus should be erected on the highest peak of the Rocky Mountain, denoting this as the great route across our continent. You have made this prophecy today a fact. This way to India! Thank you, General Dodge. Ladies and gentlemen, we are almost reached that moment for which we and the nation have been waiting to drive the last fight. But first, Mr. L.W. Cole from the Pacific Union Express Company will make a final presentation in the form of a silver plate by tomorrow. Then, Governor Stanford and Mr. Duval will make a few ceremonial facts on the precious metal spikes with tomorrow. Mr. Cole? <laughs> Railroad officials, honored guests and friends, it is the privilege of the officers and workers of the Pacific Union Express Company to express their appreciation for your enterprise and have expressed this silver hammer expressively for this uh, uh, occasion. <laughs> Gentlemen, precious metal. Yeah, that'll hold. Yeah. There you go. Yay!
in San Francisco and Mexico City, the fire alarms will ring and the cannon will be fired electrically and see you at Fort Point. Thank you, John. I'm Dr. Stanford. Gentlemen, are you ready? We are ready. <laughs> Bulletin, all ready now. The spike will soon be driven. The signal will be three dots for the commencement of the blast. Okay. Let's finish this fire road, gentlemen. You okay, sir? Yeah, use the big end, not the small one. Oh. The big end. Yeah, the <laughs> small one. All right, here we go. Oh, that's embarrassing. All right, give it a try, Mr. Durant. Do you see three of them or just one? All right, hit the one in the middle. Yeah, watch it. Yep. Oh, that's embarrassing. Oh, that guy, he works here. All right. Oh, hold on. Come on, we're getting there. Yeah. There we go. Yay! Commentary to the country. Bulletin. B O N E. Done. Cheers for the Central Pacific Railroad. Give Hooray! 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 And let us give three cheers for the Union Pacific Railroad. Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! 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 Symbol of hope for a better way of life. With new challenges yet to be accomplished for unimagined promises yet to unfold, we thank you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, for being here with us today. All right. All right, round of applause for the people at Railroad and the audience. Hey, uh, rock and some rails tour with me. We got a rock and roll tour lunch, so let's go. Okay, I gotta get out of you this. You gotta rock and roll. Put your hat and coat over there in the uh, reenactment cart, and then I'll take your strips on the toilet for two. Right over here. <laughs>